All right, I wanna give an overview of this interior estimate sheet. When you get this, one of the first things you'll do is go to your inputs, and you're going to enter any of your personal inputs, like what is your company name, phone number, logo, email address, yada yada. Then you'll go through and adjust or modify anything that is specific and custom for your business. A big thing is you're gonna to wanna to go through and delete these paints or enter the actual prices that you get them for. Then you'll save this as your main template and you're gonna make copies from this template every single time you do an estimate for interior. So you'll have your contractor agreement here on this first tab. And this is where you'll enter homeowner's name, street, email address, that sort of stuff. And then fill it out appropriately for whatever you are doing or not doing and any other notes. We've got a bunch of different options down here. If you put in a number, $5,689, it'll fill out the rest for you. And it's pulling all this information from the inputs. You can see it says 30% there. And that's coming from this deposit amount here. If I change it to 25%, it will propagate there. Now, after you've filled this out, you're gonna present this to the homeowner. So you're going to put this in a PDF format. I like to present this on a tablet. Ask them for the job. If they say yes, I just have them sign and date it right there. If they say something like they need to think about it, we'll email it to them. You do have these two plus buttons to add in more pages. So you could add a page. And these are for pictures. You can use your camera or upload a picture from whatever device you're on. And then the contract will have multiple pages. Now the way you come up with your prices is by entering measurements for different areas. So you've got nine different areas down here. And after you use this for a little bit, you'll see it's, it's pretty simple. This is where you'd enter anything for your walls, your ceiling, your baseboards, and then the rest of the stuff is for trim or some kind of other miscellaneous stuff. And you can see if you need more room, you have these little arrows here you can click and it's gonna open up a bunch more space to enter measurements. So you could actually fit almost a whole house just in this one tab right here. So let me show you how to actually work. First, you just wanna label what you're estimating. So maybe this is the master bedroom, or maybe it's a large area, like it's an open floor plan. You could put entryway, living room, dining room, and maybe even a kitchen, depending on the floor plan, because it's all kind of one big room. Maybe this is a master bed and bath. If the client wanted to see those separated or itemized, it would be better to put the bedroom on one tab and the bathroom on another tab. And you don't have to enter the measurements for everything. If all they want is an estimate on the baseboards, you just need to do the baseboards. But if we start here with the walls, if you click here, it's gonna bring up a drop down. So you're just gonna pick the wall type. I'm just gonna say a textured wall change color. And then you just measure each wall. I like to use a laser measure for interior estimates because it makes it really fast and it's accurate. So we'll figure out the ceiling is say nine foot high. We'll assume it's a nice square box. And we'll say it's a 12 by 15 room. So there's four walls, two that are 15 by nine, two that are 12 by nine. All your totals and helpful numbers will add up over here. So you can see the surface area is 486 square foot. You can also see the wall length is 54, which can be helpful for figuring out the baseboards. It should be about 54, but there's some areas where there aren't baseboards, like where the closet doors are, where the entry door is. So maybe after you subtract that, you realize it's 48 feet. And again, you wanna pick the baseboards. Maybe they're just going white again. We'll say baseboards, same color. If they decide that they wanna do the ceiling or at least see an option on it, you can pick the type of ceiling. Maybe it's going the same color, just white again. We'll say it's a 12 by 15 ceiling. This is where you'd enter your doors. There's a bunch of different door types that you could pick. Maybe the closet doors are a certain type and the entry door is a different type. Let's say that they don't want any of the doors painted. This is your door frames. This would be windows. Maybe there is one window but uh, it has no trim or it just has a window sill at the bottom that's gonna get painted. We'll pick that one and say there's one of those. Other trim type things that are miscellaneous are gonna be here. You've got things that are measured in linear foot, things that are measured in square foot, things that are measured more of like a unit or hourly type thing, like if you're gonna count stair risers or just put in a certain amount of hours for moving furniture. You also have this other, which is just if there is no standard and it doesn't make sense to create a new standard for it. You could put something in here, like random tasks they asked me to do. I think it'll take two hours, put two hours here. If it requires paint, you can put a number of gallons. 
there. And if there was ever a new standard you want to enter, you can put it in the inputs tab over here under the appropriate one. So maybe like this enter miscellaneous square foot, you can put custom standard and then ask yourself how many square foot could you do an hour? I'll put 25 and now it'll be incorporated in the sheet. So if we go to our miscellaneous square foot, it's now there. And you could make a new wall or ceiling door standard. It'll all work if you just put it in the inputs page. After you've collected measurements in the different areas that the client wants to see a quote on, you can come to your prices tab and it's as simple as turning things on to see prices. You are going to need to select what paint products for it to compute a price, which is going to be down here. Just click this drop down and all the paints that you have entered in the sheet will be there. If you want to enter a new paint, you just come to your inputs and then just put in a new paint at the bottom and then it'll be incorporated in the sheet. So let me show you what it looked like with one that's already kind of pre-filled out. You can see we've got some paint selected down here and it's spitting out a price for us down here, $6,930. Now let's just say that, hey, they wanted to turn this master bedroom off. It's as simple as unchecking the room. Now you can see it reduced the price. Turn that back on and it includes the price. Let's say that they don't want to paint the ceilings in the master bedroom and they're wondering how much money that would save. We're at 69.30. Turn that off 68.43. So you can come to your contract and you can make different options showing the differences between those prices. You can see that the sheet takes a lot of different things into account. The ceiling is roughly $125, but if we don't paint the walls, you'll see the ceiling price actually increases as well as the baseboard price because adding on the baseboards or the ceilings isn't that bad if we're painting the walls, but the instant you're not painting the walls, it tends to change a lot of the work to be done. And if you're wondering what work is to be done, this painter sheet is going to describe and show you how many hours are allocated to each task of the painting. So let me help you get a better visualization of that. If we're looking at the master bedroom here, so you can see by adjusting these things, things get included, removed, or they'll actually just change because it changes the amount of time it's gonna take. So you can see how the hours are determined here on this painter sheet. Another neat thing is you have this itemized invoice, which will break down every single item that you're gonna be doing based on what's included in the bid. It'll show you the quantity, usually square foot or linear foot, the unit price, and then what the actual total price is. And this is adaptive to where if I come here and say I turn off, you know, three of these, you'll see it's going to shorten that list quite a bit. And you can also see if I were to change something like go from a cost-effective paint to an expensive paint, it's going to change the unit prices to reflect that. So it can be really helpful. So that's a brief overview of this interior estimate sheet.